remaining stage is the Shaman. Instead, he will go after Bloody Nine, but he does pick up the level one Aether shot. So there's no chance of killing off Bloody Nine here. He'll be perfectly fine, and it will be a two for two trade on the bounties. Looks like they are just going to run back to their respective lanes now. So you are going to have two on twos in the side lanes and just the classic 1v1 mid, of course. Nothing too surprising here with this laning stage. Yeah, not no shenanigans here, no uh, clump ups for first blood, as we tend to see some some other teams really like to do. Still, that top lane here for speed not going to be a good time. You've, you've got Luki Luki around, you've got Yarin around, Rubik plus Tide, no right click damage you can expect from speed, and every time that Blade Fury's down, he's going to have a pretty hard time holding himself up. So. Uh, just gotta have to watch out for these early phases in the lane and albino zebra all he can really do is just illuminate out and take the range creep to ensure they get that steady exp it's gonna be one of those lanes for our albino on the coddle where he's just gonna have to get to pulling very very early on i i just don't think there's much he can do to really help out this jargon it is one of those games where speed once he gets a couple levels up he should be able to just kind of do his own thing without albino being around speaking of though albino gonna get caught out here by lukey lukey and cop a fair bit of damage nowhere near enough to kill him off but he's gonna have to commit that salve early on on the brighter side i believe he should know there's an observer ward in the lane now that he should be able to get a d ward off on he does get the range creep as well which is very nice from the coddle but now speed's gonna find himself in trouble in fact he's gonna go on to lukey lukey who does tp straight out of the coddle excuse me on the tide and be perfectly fine yeah, good aggression coming out, trying to punish Luki for overstepping. Not quite enough to find a kill. That is the spin down here for speed as well. So Yarn does know that he's got a little bit, little bit of space, space to get some harassment out. Of course, that does mean that we can take a look at the mid lane. Ray Lelisa up against Mio. Storm versus Void Spirit. Really steady lane. Ray Lelisa is working this one out quite well, though. Ahead and last hit so far, applying that early pressure on Void Spirit. And as long as this maintains, Ray Lelisa is not going to be displeased at all. Like, the power runes are still really really important but you get off to the smooth start in the storm you're an easy ride up onto that orchid I got the bottle up very early on as well really lisa so again those power runes at the four minute mark going to be very important between these two who does manage to get the first one but albino top lane does go down yaron able to pick up the first blood and didn't even need the fade bolt john he just got to lift off into the gush of lukey lukey does end up being a very easy kill onto the keeper of the light yeah, that's the one thing with the Keeper of the Light. You can't, uh, uh, you're not really tanky enough to trade. Like, you've got very little armor. The Gush just takes out a lot more of that. And the Rubik's just able to abuse that. He's got these early boots up on Yarin. So the move speed you have naturally on Albino isn't amazing. And that does allow them to run you down really quick here. I, I really don't think there's much Albino can do in this lane. I, I feel like he should probably just go to pulling, but... Looks like the small camp was blocked at the time. They're trying to go onto Yarin, but he's just going to TP straight out. Of course, that's going to be one of the beauties of this lane for Dog Champ is if they have their TPs available, they've got really nothing to be worried about. As there's no way to cancel the TPs apart from the Willow Wisp, but of course that's not going to be available for quite a while. Speed, he's going to go on to Lukey, Lukey, but he just literally doesn't care. In fact, he'll just turn back around now with the Gush, and of course he does still have a salve available, so he could just heal himself up. Yeah, and they're keeping that lane shoved in. Two range creeps now. Gonna be a hard time for speed. And does at least get some safe last hits under the tower. And that does let Albino Zebra get a pull off. So top lane still back and forth here for the side of uh, Electronic Boys. Down bot though, the last lane we haven't talked about. You do have Giant. Level 3 now in the Night Stalker. He is laning with double A. Um, they are up against Bloody Nine's uh, oh. support. Puck and ooh, gone. Yeah, they got Bloody Nine. Uh, that's one of the uh, <laughs> things he's going to be very wary about, just getting hit by those shackles of double A. Does end up going down. Ritsu, of course, on the PL, and not much he can really do to help out the Puck if he does get caught out like that. It's almost just a guaranteed kill for Giant. Once you've got the Hex up on top, it's going to be a very dangerous time for Bloody Nine. Bloody Nine, though, he will just TP straight back to the lane and bring some items over to Ritsu. Like, he wasn't too dissuaded by the shackles that was out there by Double A. Yeah, it's, uh, it's really all you want. Like, you, you have to go back in the lane to soak that EXP. The Puck does not want to fall too far behind in EXP gain. 
but this duo of PL plus Puck is just not amazing. It, there's not much kill potential here. It's back to that same issue as well that you saw from Electronic Boys on the opposing side up top, but they don't really have control with a Puck PL as well. Uh, compared to the shackles that shaman has and that hex down the line so just gonna be a steady lane here for dog champ to try to farm up and so far yeah he went for that bounty room but it's gonna cost him his own life yeah I, i'm sure he knew what he was getting into when he threw that orb out double a tried to race him for it for a second but it looks like they're more than happy to just take the kill you know, usually I'd say as a position five to get the bounty rune i'd argue it's well worth it but in fact hold that thought for speed was dropping very low up in that top lane, but he's just gonna be able to pop the healing ward and be fine. Bounty. But what I was saying, John, is usually position five's getting bounties for their own life is, I would say, worth it. But I don't really like the idea of giving too many kills to the Night Stalker early on. And as well as that, you're playing a position five puck, a lot of XP to be online. Uh, I, I just attack. don't know if I'd say it's worthwhile this time around for Bloody Knight. It's a difficult trade to make. I think considering your options in lane, it's still not too bad, but it's really not the ideal. And you do get a nice little pickup here for the Electronic Boys, and they go on to Ritsu. They do. They've got the Crippling Fear as well, and that's going to be an easy pickup if they can keep that silence up. But do they have the damage? No, they don't. The Doppel is out, and Ritsu is going for a run, but Giant's still chasing him down. A Salbound from Ritsu. Is it going to be enough? It is not. They do get the kill. A very nice one there from Electronic Boys is now Yaren. He's going to be forced to TP in, but they get a kill here. Mio, he's even rotated now on the Void Spirit, trying to go back onto Bloody Nine. The Orb Away is going to be fine, but Yaren is not going to be able to get himself out. And now up at the top lane, they even found Luki Luki. Just an absolute disaster across the map for Dog Champ. And it all kind of went back to that rotation from the Rubik jump. They uh, they thought they could get a maybe a bit of a trade there with the rotation out from Yaren, but... Support Puck plus Rubik is not a good combination for kills up, up until your level 6. No, definitely not. I think Yaren maybe got Radiant's the TP off a bit too late. He needed to be there earlier, right when they were already making moves on the PL. If he came in a little bit earlier, he, they might have been able to pick up that Shadow Shaman they were looking for. But as you mentioned, Giant's just finding all these kills. 3-0 so far on the side of this Night Stalker. And with his first night, you don't tend to see too many kills nowadays, but Giant's just on a roll. Level 6 up, shoving in that bot lane. He's got the Siege Creep. He's pressuring Bloody Nine. And Ritz is just forced to go all Crippling Fear is being caught out. Double A going to be able to get the Shackles as well. That should be a dead puck as they can't cancel the Shackles yet. They don't even have the Ravage yet on Luki Luki. So Giant, his fourth pick up. And now Ritsu, he denies himself off to a neutral camp. But it is still a death on the PL and Giant. He's, he's giving him the tip. He's happy with it. Yeah, and this is time where your PL is not farming. He can't even go up to the top lane, which is normally where you see cores go once they're safe lanes off. They switch lanes around. Not working out for the side of Dog Champ. And you can see Electronic Boys. They've got so much control on the map. They've got these stacks coming out from Albino Zebra. They've Radiance got a lot of gold coming in. 1 to 6, 2k advantage for the Electronic Boys. So, so far, so good. Um, Dog Champ right now just needs to hold back. Wait for the Orchid on Ray Lisa. It is forming up in a very good time here for the storm. And perhaps play around his first ravage of Luki, but considering how far behind the rest of the team is, it's gonna be hard to find a follow-up to that ravage. That it will be. That uh oh they found the PL again. Yeah, Ritsu mid lane getting caught out, and that'll be a dead PL. And this is getting really, really bad now for Dom Champ as the zip in is gonna be there from Raider Lisa, but it is only gonna be a support shadow shaman. Definitely not the kind of trade you want there from Dog Champ. Uh, props to Mio for the nice rotation out with the shaman, but this is just such a rough start for Dog Champ. All props to Electronic Boys, they're doing a fantastic job with this draft. And if they're really playing around their timings quite well, they've bought a lot of space out now for speed. He had a bit of a slower start in lane, it was not a fun time, but he's level 7 now, he's got his Midas almost done on the jug, so we're looking at maybe a 10 minute Midas or 10 and a half minute Midas here, and if you leave this jug alone with the Midas, it that leads up faster Maelstrom perhaps, or uh, any such else to help control that PL, and they keep roaming here, it's the side of Electronic Boys. Well, I think when you've got a 2k lead this early on with the Night Stalker draft on, I think you can just go. No reason to slow down. And look at Ritsu. He's forced to farm in the uh, in the dangerous part of the map. 
Uh, he wants to give the triangle over to his Storm Spirit. Looks like he's gonna move his way up towards that top lane. He's probably just gonna be chased down no matter where he goes. Of course, Dong Chap, they are going to group up now up that top lane and perhaps try to go for that 10 minute tower push. They still have the Ravage available as well to go for a big team fight if they so wish. I think the more important aspect here is to just get that top T1 tower ASAP to open up the map a little bit for themselves. It's going to be a matter of whether Electronic Boys really want to take this fight. Looks like for now they are just splitting up and maybe they'll just go for the counter push down for bot lane. In fact, speaking of bot lane, Giant, he's gonna get jumped now by Ray Lisa, but do they have the damage output? No, nope. no they won't. Giant is gonna be perfectly fine. Ray Lisa will not chase too far in by himself. Yeah, it's, a, it's a hard target to go for for Ray Lisa. It can be as fast of a push compared to when those Shaman Wards do drop. Oh, here they go. Siege creep still there, double A, he's just gonna drop it straight off the bat, and that should be a T1 mid tower just gone. Bloody Knight, he's stuck around a bit too long there, the Hex is gonna come out straight into the shackles, but do they have the damage? Well, they'll have the control there from Mio. They get another pickup on Electronic Boys. Dog Champ just not really finding the answer to the aggression quite yet from Electronic Boys, I've gotta say. What is it, John? You seem to have found something funny across the map. <laughs> Ritsu has a Midas as well. Um, Ritsu yeah. went Midas on PL. Um, not the most common, but I think when you're this far behind, you do need some way to get that EXP flow in, that steady farm in, to counteract how fast the drug can work. Um, this is the lineup pretty well compared to speed's timing on Midas, though. Oh, oh Omni! Speed? I'm not sure about that one. He just goes straight onto Luki Luki, but the TP is going to be straight out. So not a bad attempt. I, I like the idea he had, but. Obviously, if the TP Radiant's was available, that was the easy play to make. That being said as well, Yaren now has Omni Slash Stolwell on the Rubik, which, you know, it's questionable how effective it's going to be, but... Damage up. Of course, while that was happening, John Bot Lane, they do get the bottom T1 tower, and now an immediate smoke out with Giant. Does have the Dark Ascension. Middle tower is under Time to tower. go, in fact. A double damage rune, Yaren might get baited into this as double A moves in with the Hex, but now the zip in. The DD was already taken, Giant, he gets the crippling fear off on the storm, but a nice Ravage out. Luki Luki stopping them in their tracks, they will still kill off Rain Lisa. can they find more? Bloody Nine, he is very lonely, he does go down to the Eve, the shock on double A. Now Albino, he does drop, but Luki Luki, he's probably set to drop as well, and he does go down. In fact, they just found so many heroes across this map. Four heroes going down for the side of Dog Chap and Electronic Boys. A very dominant team fight, even with the Ravage going off. Yeah, this is the the only bright side right now. This is a lot of space for Ritsu. He's still playing up top, unpunished solo, just getting some farm up, maximizing this Midas. And that was not the best Orchid reveal coming out, although they zip in again. New mid lane, double A, gonna get caught out, does go down. No whining, so, no. The game's going in a way where you can only really focus on the supports right now if you are Dog Champ. Luckily though, Ray Lisa with the Orchid can just continuously do that if he so wishes. Seeing a lot more zips in in just a moment as Albino now showing himself in the mid lane. Speed also going to show himself. This could be dangerous, but... He does still have that mid tier one tower on his side of the map. Still, they're gonna zip in. Ray Lisa gets the Orchid off, and here come the TPs. Do they have enough time, though? No, they don't. You had your warning. Speed. Bit overly confident there, but now Mio moving in with the Remnant does end up picking up Bloody Nine. Still a very nice trade out for Dog Chat. Yeah, they're gonna be happy with keeping down Speed. Really good pick up there, um, maximizing this Orchid again on Ray Lisa. He is going for the Bloodstone still, it looks like, on the Storm. Um, not too sure about that one. I, I still feel like Orchid BKB might be better, but if he wants to kind of build up these ganks, if he knows he's going to live through the control and just go for these softer targets one by one, then the Bloodstone will reward you. The issue is, will Electronic Boys allow that? I don't think they should. They've got to clump up. Play while they're strong and keep this aggression up. They're playing down bot now, just taking control of this jungle. And the side of uh, Dog Champ really just don't have too much space to go around here. Uh, the only one showing up on this jungle is Luki Luki. He's the only one that they can really toss into the fire here. 
Yeah, I really think this Bloodstone uh, pickup from Rayla Lisa is going to come back to bite him if he's not too careful. I mean, we saw it in the last team fight. If he gets hexed or if he gets shackled, he is just going to die. So you do have the crippling fear silence out from the Night Stalker. Speaking of dying, Lukey Lukey was being slowed up, but he's going to be all right. They do split up Bloody Nine as well, but they don't have a way to close the gap. Still now, zip in, Rayla Lisa down the bot lane, trying to just take down speed. He's still alive, but almost down, and does eventually end up going down as Giant keeps moving in onto Rayla Lisa, but the Ravage is out from Luki onto all four heroes, and they're going to be able to turn this one around. Double A holding down one. It's not going to be enough, though. Yaren, he does make it out. Still Bloody Nine trying to fight back, but he is also going to die. Still a three for one so far as Rayla Lisa back in onto Giant. They do make it work. A four for one trade for Dog Chap. It's a, a very important team fight and maybe just a bit of over aggression out from the side of Electronic Dyer's Boys, John. As they were under fighting attack. right underneath that tier two tower at 15 and a half minutes. Probably not the smartest idea. Now, definitely overconfident there from the side of the Electronic Boys. Uh, Speed is constantly putting himself up front which leaves him very vulnerable to that Orchid. Like, uh, he doesn't have BKB, no Manta styled yet, still saving up for that Maelstrom. So it's going to be a while oh, until our Jug Lord. is ready to dispel that silence on himself. And as long as you've got that control on the Storm, you can easily collapse on that Jug. Although, Luki... Luki, Luki. Hot lane, I mean, he's a tanky Tide Hunter, but he's not really that tanky. He gets surrounded and he's eventually going to go down. He had the blink in his backpack as well, so he couldn't really try to make the reaction play and blink away from Mio. So another nice pick up here from Electronic Boys. And it seems like the idea here, John, is they're not going to be able to deal with the PO later on. So they really want to try and get as many objectives as humanly possible. They are just going to keep rotating across the map and trying to pick off heroes. There's Raider Lisa on the mid lane. Careful, but he is going to be able to zip away in time. Dyer's middle tower T1 mid tower is just going to get denied off. Yeah, that evens up the map control here for the side of uh, Dog Champ, though. So if we're looking at even objectives so far across the map. Two tier ones down for both sides. Electronic Boy is still looking to get more objectives. They're still playing around this bot jungle. Uh, we are seeing Giant rush a BKB now, so that they've got the solid frontliner that can tank Dyer's the Orchid. It's going to be a while until that's attack. up. And we're also seeing Mio still work his way towards that ag still three parts away yields has been influential but as long as mio is not in front he's been using it in the yields mainly as the offensive setup they do drop the wards for that tier two now but again you're seeing uh dog camp just gonna let ritsu ride us up top as well absolutely yeah a tier two for a tier two trade ritsu he does take it much slower but his team is right behind and it's like they are just trying to use ritsu as bait up at this top lane they TP to try and defend this. The answer is no. Electronic boys are not falling for this at all. They're just kind of running Dyer's their way up. Tower is under With the smoke. Radiance bottom tower is under attack. They are going to try and force a team fight. Now this is into the ravage Dyer's of Luki Luki. Is under attack. So it could be a dangerous predicament for them if they do get caught out again. Dyer's top tower has fallen. So they aren't going to be comfortable to Dyer's move their way up to the high ground. You know, John, going back to Giant on the Night Stalker, I think he should just pick up the Blink Dagger rather than going for the BKB first. So, yeah. it is going to be important for him Dyer's to just get the Blink off onto the Puck, attack. onto the Storm, and just silence them up. Even, of course, the PL here. Because that Crippling Fury is one of the best pieces of lockdown they have this game. That might Radiant's just be the idea from Giant as well. He has attack. saved up quite a bit of gold. He, uh, he may just go ahead and just pick up the Blink first. It'd be a lot stronger and help them start these fights. You are seeing the side of Dog Champ really start to build in. And there's that blink. You need to play with that power spike because they've lost the lead. Ritsu's now number one in farm. They've traded the tier two for free. Even though it's a tier two for tier three, that tier two up top should not have fallen. And now it's a roche time for Dog Champ. They've still got Ravage. They are scanned out, but you are running right into Ravage here. Yeah, but they've got the Blink Night Stalker, John. This could be very, very dangerous as they could just get jumped with the Crippling Fear. And in fact, there they go. But the Orchid does come out. But a nice Blink reaction away from Giant. It's going to be enough to force Dog Champ out of that Roshan pit. The Roshan, it's pretty healthy anyway. It's not like you really need to try and contest it right now. 
Dog Champ, they know this. So they're just going to keep pushing out the lanes. Keep farming up. No real reason to rush. Especially when you do have the PL to kind of rely on later on into the game. I think uh, Electronic Boys are still the ones that do have a timer on their heads with this kind of draft. Group up again. Do we see another smoke out perhaps? Looks like they don't have one. So they're just going to try and make the jump in onto Ritsu. who's just chilling out in that mid lane. They should know he's there now, but Crippling D is not going to be there from Giant. Oh. Blink in, and now the Ravage. Lukey, Lukey. He just jumps in onto three of them. They take down Speed Train off the bat. Yaren going to be in a spot of danger, but so are the side of the Tronic Boys. Is now the Dream Coil from Bloody Nine. They're trying to fight Lukey, Lukey, but he's way too tanky on that time up top. There's the Vortex out from Ray Lisa, and they'll get Giant down onto Double A. They get the Shaman, and that is just a really bad team fight for Electronic Boys. So I'm, uh, I'm not sure what they were thinking, John. You saw the crippling fear being popped there by Giant, but he did not blink in. The bit of hesitation does cost them a team fight again. It's a huge costly mistake to make. That's going to open up the Roche now for sure. Put aside the dog champ, they put the bodies in. They do not have any spells to throw in there. Even if you had some form of buyback here, you do not have the Dark Ascension. Oh, oh Mio. One more. Great lift down from Yaren. Dust out, they've caught out Albino as well. Zebra will end up dying, and now even Speed, he's going to be all right. As Rayla Lisa was a bit low on mana. Be enough, Dog Champ straight back into that Roshan pit. It's a very slow process for the Roshan, and yeah, they're just going to leave it be. Probably not a smart decision to keep just trying to force that without the Ravage up. 4k net worth lead now for Dog Champ, and considering how the game started, John, this is a very, very good kind of predicament here for the Radiant. Oh yeah, they're, they're finding themselves on the up and up. Ritsu is now very clearly in the lead here on his PL. Has his uh, Manta up, going straight for a butterfly to improve his durability. That's going to make it a nightmare for our Jug to deal with that. No MKB in sight for speed, and it's going to be a long time pull that up as he's still saving for his own Manta. So. The space bought out here by Dog Champ is big. We did see the Glimmer Cape reveal from Albino Zebra. Probably their only save right now, but they're ready with the dust sand. Oh, Ooh, Dream Coil, Dream not going to connect on Mio. You know, on the brighter side for Dog Champ, that is a support puck who, you know, it, Dream Coil is such a low cooldown anyway. I, I don't think they're going to mind. You may as well just try. So, Bloody Nine, he'll have a backup in about 65 seconds. With your like Ravage is going to be up in about 5 seconds, but Mio is going to chase down the Tide. You do have the Aghanim Scepter up on Mio now, so you've got to watch out for that Silence. But the 8th, the Remnant won't land. He finally uses the Yules now. Luki Luki still being chased down, but Speed! He goes down to top lane. Meanwhile, Luki Luki is still getting chased down, but now the Ravage comes out. And Ritsu, he's going to come in from the backside. Now the rest of the team is TPing in. This does not look great for the side of Electronic Boys. Is now Mio. He's in big, big trouble. They'll try to Silence up the Storm, but they get the kill and now albino still trying to run but he is also gonna die oh and dog champ they recognized how slow the kill was gonna be on lukey lukey so they went after speed first and then just made the rotation back into the tide hunter just great uh, coordination out from this radiant side that is very costly for the side of Electronic Boys. The lead grows wider here for Dog Champ. 7k up, 18 to 15, and it's their turn to smoke. They did blow Ravage, but they've got a lot in the tank here for Ray Lisa. He's got that fresh Bloodstone. He's already built up some charges. He wants to find more, and this is going to be an issue. Like He's not being punished at all for going Bloodstone first. This is just going to give him a smooth ramp up into the BKB, and once that's up on Ray Lisa. Well, you just absolutely have no control once that BKB is running. Right, and the one thing was, I mean, you were meant to kind of use that crippling fear with the blink on the Night Stalker to really abuse the fact that Rayleigh Lisa doesn't have the BKB up yet, but we've just seen it. It hasn't happened. Uh, just a, too much hesitation at the critical moments there from Electronic Boys have cost them that timing. Now you're in real danger. Rayleigh Lisa, if he wants now, yeah, he's just going to pick up a BKB. He could just be this greedy and not get punished for it. And I, uh, I think Electronic Boys, they've really missed a pretty big timing here. They're now 8k behind. You keep bringing it up at speed. He's still just trying to work towards that Manta style for now. Very, very slow process here for the Jug. 
up. Well, before that comes up, they're just not able to get anything else done. I think they've just got to try and secure the mantle. Yeah, all they can do is stall out until Speed's semi-ready to at least stand front, or at least not get orchided up. This has been a constant issue for Speed. We've seen him die, what, three, four times to the man, uh, to the orchid coming out from Real Elisa? Just superb targeting out from Dog Champ. And they're, they're confident. They've got these Guardian Greaves up now, and Luki Luki uh, Ravage is going to be up in about 10 seconds. And Luki is going to go for that. Yeah, he's going for that shard. It's beautiful. Just Love really it. good in push. The damage is ridiculous. And the cooldown is insane. So expect even more coming out from Luki. Like, this is, this is just a fabulous time for Dog Champ already. Maybe a sneaky Roshan, though, John. E boys. Yeah, they dropped the ward. They want this pretty bad. One of the wards is outside of the Roshan pit, but there's no vision to scout this out. They're gonna just try and rush this, but it does look like Dog Champ are well aware that this could be happening. Bloody Nine gonna suss it out now with the orb, and he does spot them out. They have plenty of time to initiate here with the Blink Ravage. Doesn't look great for E Boys as Luki Luki oh. jumps in with a massive ravage now. Up to four heroes straight onto that keeper of the line, and they are just melting in that Roshan pit. Albino, he barely gets out with his life intact. In fact, Luki, he's the one dropping low now, but so is the Roshan. Who do you focus? They try to go on the giant. Roshan still dropping Ray Lolita. He does pick up the Aegis now. Crippling Fear just not doing enough. The fight continues back onto speed. He'll manta off the silence. Who they aim for now? It looks like they do pick up Giant, but Yaren does also go down and now back into Mio. Meanwhile, you do see Rutu taking down Albino Zebra. That'll be your Void Spirit also dying. Speed, or rather double A, is still trying to fight by himself with the shackles out. Rutu literally just ignores him. Luki, Luki wants to get a bit of revenge here and there. Just... All right, they're just letting him shackle him up. Ritsu? Ritsu, he's, <laughs> he's having a good time, John. It's a back massage here for Ritsu. Uh, <laughs> Come on, uh, all right. TP out. Is it going to be enough? No. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, I love oh, it. Champ. I love it. <laughs> this is it. That's, that is N.A. Right there in a nutshell. You know you're on top. Dyer's you know you're in, top. you're in the lead. You style a bit. You let them know, although Ray Lulisa... <laughs> Ray Lulisa, mid lane, does lose the ages. Meanwhile, Double A saying he clicked the outpost by accident. That's why the TP was taking so long, apparently. But very fun stuff here from these two teams. But Dog Champ, very, very serious. John, 16k net worth lead now. I feel like a broken record, but... I already mentioned this, E-Boys, they've kind of missed a pretty big timing here. It feels like they're going to be locked up in their base for quite a bit. I don't believe they'll have enough time to close the gap here. They won't. Speed will be fine. Look at Ritsu in the back line, just kind of looping around, back onto the jug now. Speed, can be focused down. Bloody Nine looking for a big dream coil, but can't find an angle. Now Mio going to jump back here with a nice remnant down on the park. Dyer's middle tower going to do nothing. Do manage to secure that tier 2 mid tower. Yeah, that's uh, one lane left here for E-Boys. Only the bot lane left for them to play with and defend. Not going to be an easy time. We still need a lot of farm flying out on speed. And they are 17k down now. You look at Ray Lovisa, the BKB we were talking about is up. So it's going to be harder to control the storm in this match. And it just gives a lot more angles for Ray, for Ray Lovisa to start these fights. Not only that, but the shard is up on Luki Luki. So there's that damage and cooldown on Anxious Man. It's going to be really hard to oh, fight into that. Speed, speed. He's been caught out in his triangle. He'll try to go for the spin away with the Glimmer Cape. And that may be enough. But no, Ritsu's making his way. Oh, they just get a massive ravage off Luki. Jumping in again. Just cleaning them up. Double A, he's trying to get a kill for his team. He's going to get bursted down. Speed's still there, but the Dream Call does come out. Bloody Nine finds another. Giant, he gets a kill, but the GG's been called. Had enough of this game number one. And John, you look at the items of Ritsu. We'll see it in the, uh, the post-game screen, but he had the butterfly as well as a hard up. It was just looking way too tough for Electronic Boys to come back from.